Silence. That's what I'm hearing. The cricket silence. He continues. Continues even if you think you're not. If you're not responsive to what's going on, I keep saying it every week. Every week we say in this, and it's, keep bringing it up, and it, examples of it occur every time. Every time I go out in the world, talk with people, finding out you're passionate, you're not. You're not wrong, but you're not effective. And there's ways to become that. And I'm hoping that people start picking up what I've been saying. The ant, the the answers are really pretty quick to come when you understand what it is they're how they're how they're deceiving us what they're doing how they obfuscate and how to start parsing through what this is and start making your path notwithstanding whatever what everyone tells you about what the path is and the term gaslighting might fit here real well although i don't like these terms they seem to they seem to diminish really what's going on the references to literary works of people communicating things, but they don't really tell us the underlying points. And uh, so I, I get a little bit suspect of some of that. But anyway, some people wrap around it really well, and that's how you communicate with the world anymore. So there's a, a methodology. Well, first of all, there's something that's come against you all. Me too, but against you all. That uh, actually a couple things uh, that had to be addressed in a certain way, and a lot of people don't like doing that. People generally don't like doing it, and yet we are in a society. I think the place was constructed that we had to do that, and when we didn't, there was no excuse, and so the perpetrators can get away with it. And not many, not many people will ask for actual accountability or demand it or follow through until they get it or keep pushing on it until they get something that looks like accountability. And they're persuaded against them, their own, uh, their own better judgments. And it's just a general condition that we, we are, we are. So I don't know what more to say than to, if you have a problem, you're going to have to address it. And then they've got us so, so messed up, so screwed up that we're we're internally messed up. We have defects in ourselves that were really compounded by those that knew about them. This is BTWRLM332. For those of you on the aftercast, wherever you find this uh, this broadcast, and I forgot weeks and weeks ago, Vinny in the RLM chat had told me that Sound Minds over at Sound Minds and Sound Minds and Veronica had said hi, and I forgot to. Uh, Follow up the next week and in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll tell you now, weeks late. <laughs> Hello out there and Sound Minds simulcasting as well, so that you can get this uh, get this information, folks. It's uh, it's out it's out there uh, to have and it's being d disseminated for for everybody. And you can be helping getting the word out. While if you are, while you all are working to figuring under, understanding how to figure out this place. And as I said, I'm here to set the, path, uh, the trailhead for you if that's where you want, as soon as you decide to take, the, take that journey. I won't have all the answers, but I'll have a, so far I've had a pretty good insight. And you got to notice to put up my microphone here a bit ago. I turned it up a while. It should be now. Uh, if you can give me a heads up on whether or not that was okay. It's looking relatively okay on this end, although that that's nothing. Uh, I can always be can always be a defect in all this uh, little in digital instrumentation. But yeah, anyway, so uh, thank you for the heads up anyway there. Uh, we are set up for the takedown, as I've put it, and I think we we might actually give lip service to all that. We don't want to believe that we're that easily taken. We want to believe we're moving through the, our, high, our noblest purposes and we're doing our best. And on the other hand, then we make every excuse in the world not to do better. And just what we're up against is not going to care about all that. What I find interesting is, uh, I was thinking someone was listening behind the woodshed. I'll read this for you. My dear Mr. My dear Wormwood, be sure that the patient remains completely fixated on politics, arguments, political gossip, and obsessing on the faults of people they have never met serves as an excellent distraction from advancing a in personal virtue, character, and the things the patient can control. 
Make sure to keep the patient in a constant state, stage of angst, frustration, and general disdain towards the rest of the human race in order to avoid any kind of charity or inner peace from further developing. Ensure the patient continues to believe that the problem is out there and in the broken system rather than recognizing there is a problem with himself. Keep up the good work. Uncle Screwtape. Sounds like someone's listened behind the witch show. In fact, nothing new other than the sun, folks. That was written by C.S. Lewis in 1942. As it's described that this was revealing the secret plan of imprisoning the whole world back in 1942. And I don't, if I read that, that came through the Twitter. Uh, I think it might have been Gary L. I don't know exactly uh, who, but uh, at any rate. I don't have many people I get to follow, and I say I get to follow because they don't allow me to follow anybody. So if I'm not following you, that's the reason why on Twitter. And uh, so I can't remember who, how I get through it. Anything I get has to go through the people that I am, had followed before I got shut out. At any rate, so that uh, a consistent, when you see this stuff, folks, you, it's a consistent observation of how they're doing it all to us. And over a long time since, it, well, well before 42, we haven't altered our course whatsoever. And that's what I'm saying about it's required that we alter the course. And before we can do that, we have to have a real good understanding of what it is. And without getting too far afield, we had a Jefferson Mining District uh, meeting here this last Friday. And someone came to visit to give us an indication on some measure that's coming before us, other people to vote. And uh, the letter that was written in conjunction, and it, I just pointed out how uh, the, the people that are wanting to check all this wrong are not wrong in doing that. They're not wrong in their observation that there's things going wrong, but they had to been totally uneducated in what the foundation from which the measure they were looking at was working. And I was, al I was able to, uh, given that they want to hear it, explain how to make some simple adjustments which would flip their whole position from one of opinion to one of objective fact of wrongdoing, which would preclude the very harm that comes on them. And I don't know if I've said that clearly enough for a lot of people. There's ways to respond that you must respond that are lit, written, and I'll just say it's in the statutes, if you will, that those that are moving against you are working through. And if you don't work through that, and you reference those that are, those guidelines and limitations for how a thing is to be done by that officialness, if you don't cite the errors, and not the ones that they have discretion to decide, the ones that they have no discretion to decide, then you're going to be a whole lot better presenting your case, your issue before any other official, or before the, the, the public jury, the, the body politic, if you will, the people that are listening in that are going to be affected that don't have a clue how this thing works. But as C.S. Lewis saw before, I've never read this, that's why it, it always impresses me how much has always been said and we just disregard, they get you to be, divide yourself, they get you fixated on these things that are really, they're really going to do nothing Ultimately, why well, I told you last week, you, there is an interest in the Epstein thing, but it's not for the fact of the gossip that gets spread around Epstein. It's about, uh, there's people out there, a deep, deep problem, not a deep state, it's a deep, deep problem. I've identified, I identified it way back in 2000 for myself. It doesn't matter one way or the other, I would keep my eye on that. I couldn't stop it. They almost stopped me, but I keep my eye on it, but I don't put any more time and energy into that matter other than to keep an eye on, let's say, how it rolls out, how the thing's going down. Once you see the tail of the tape, you, you don't have to put much more time into it. And yet people get wrapped up with this stuff and beyond uh, keeping, just keeping tab. Like, let's say Khashoggi. As soon as the Khashoggi case, as soon as they uh, said that there was uh, no body, it was dissolved, if you even go back to my Twitter feed, you'll see it's over. I said I was now communicating it's done. They have now answered the problem. There's nothing going to come out of that. Why? No body, no case. 
And then for all we know, he could be visiting in some island. Maybe it was Epstein's island. Maybe it was another Epstein island with a with an umbrella in his drink. Given he was all part of that system of deep, so-called deep state system anyway. So there's a certain point when you just stop putting effort to it. And so unless you're focusing on something you can do something about, you're wasting your time. You're, you're what C.S. Lewis was talking about, you're getting into argument, political gossip, obsessing and faults and all this other stuff, fixated on what's going on. The breads and circus is full. This is, you know, we, I only know my life and it was after this guy. Uh, I'm not too, actually too literate in the literature. I don't read that much that way. I've never really been interested. I don't, I don't watch movies that much. And I understand that there's something to could be said for. Again, the movie that I did watch, I was taken to, uh, was The Matrix. It happened to be that one spoke volumes to me, but not that it was telling me anything. It was just acknowledging the world uh, to you all, and I could see it. And so that I said, well, here's there's not going to be an excuse now for the people to see what's going on. Now, it is Hollywood, but you reduce that into actual tangible form, reality, and you'll see exactly what that, that thing has been telling you. And nothing's really changed out of it. It's all getting worse. It's all happening and coming down exactly the way that was exposing to you. How those uh, uh, those um, creators of that, actually it was the woman behind that. I haven't really read the book, so I don't, I'm not read that read that well. There was a lady who actually did that idea in a book, and it was found out after the movie. But the notwithstanding, how did, how did someone have the insight? What spirit came to them and told them, this is, you better tell people this? Or how are they involved and then were able to, to spell it out for you in a supposed fictional way? And so we always have these, like, I, that's why I went to, I stopped being so know, knowing so much and went into, there's categories and possibilities and probabilities, and you have to keep everything in its order. And just keep keep your eyes open. Just keep taking in the information and categorizing things on the potential. And then the ultimate thing you do is it's not just a, an information collector. You you look at what you're what's most pervasive in your life that needs to be fixed and done something about. Everything else it's it gets shifted off the register, and yet you keep tabs. Like right now, I wasn't going to go too far here. I'm not going to. The Epstein thing, very interesting how they're talking about uh, his neck, the, the multiple bones broken on a what looks to me to be a mere strangulation. And then they focused on one of the bones. Uh, what am I interested in that for? Well, this is indicating if it's just a strangulation with broken bones, it wasn't just a strangulation that he did. And we're looking at the bigger cause. Remember, I've had friends that went to jail and didn't come out by this very same thing. And so there's an interest in my mind to say, okay, what is one of the techniques that these people do when they take you out? Whether or not you can do anything about it. And what are you going to do when you're in these conditions in order to uh, protect yourself? And sometimes you will have something you can do and sometimes you won't. That's really the only interest. I'm not interested beyond that. This is just this thing is going to, just going to roll out the way it rolls out. Only the people that are hot on it that can identify the the put na faces and names to conditions that are actionable, and then out those that won't take the action that are duty bound to take the action is the only way we're going to be getting further as a society. Otherwise, as uh, it was acknowledged when I explained. Uh, during the miners meeting, how someone could do better, not just complain and not just by opinion, but actually do it, make the record of appropriately. They they quickly came to the observation that, first of all, the other side just can not listen to you and laugh at you. Just You mean nothing to them. And there's no record to counter what that feeling, that mistreatment. She immediately understood, as I explained how to do it better, that when you didn't do it that way, you would be mistreated, you would be disregarded. And so this is a critical critical understanding of what I've been saying. If you want to see the world go better, you have to get out of your arguments, out of your politics, out of the gossip, out of the obsessing over all this kind of stuff that you really can't do much about. And if you can, then you should be focused on it and you wouldn't be obsessing anyway. You would be actually one of the people digging up the information or the records or the tracking down of where people are or the connections, whatever you're doing to make 
an end game out of it for, for you. I was talking to another friend. We're talking about all these ideas that came to be sweltering through. We talked about, you know, what about this flat earth and what about this, uh, this and well, whatever, all these other things. I said, well, you can, you, you can have these, you can have these discussions, but what are they going to help stopping the corruption downtown? What are they going to help stop the guy that's going to come shoot you when you get out in the road? How is it all going to do anything? I have no problem with the discussion. I used to do it myself. It's kind of a fascinating discussion to exercise all this. But it's not doing anybody any good. Whether or not the earth is flat, it's not going to change the, or stop the guy that may shoot you when you get out on the highway. Now here you get behind a woodshed. I'm telling you what you better start doing in order to make that more possible. So, you know, if, if you think there's a there's a dome a firm moment, uh, like a cement uh, up in the sky, I want you to go... Uh, Make yourself a device, maybe a big uh, rail gun with a big suction cup on it, and shoot your rail gun with a suction cup up so it, it impacts the, uh, the the glass dome over this place. And I want you to go up that rope that you now attach to it, and I want you to take a picture, and I want to see a video of you knocking on that glass. Do it. Science has failed us. You be the scientist. Go prove it. might be easier, though, instead of shooting a, a rail gun with a suction cup straight up, maybe go to the edge of the earth. Go beyond the icy domain, climb to the edge, and then shoot that, that suction cup sideways because that dome is real close, isn't it? But don't talk about it. Go do it. Go solve the problem. Go make the observation. And it's all going to be on each one of you if it's interesting. If it's not, like it, to me, it doesn't matter whether or not the sun is what it is. I have my own opinions on the sun. It's, science will not agree with it. In fact, one other guy who's really not an astrophysicist is coming up with the idea that I had thought about, but he's much, much more intelligent than I am. He can actually explain it. And so I go, there's one other guy in the world that sees it the way I saw it when I was younger. But later I could care less. Why? Because it doesn't matter. That sun better come up. Or I'll, I'll, it doesn't matter. We're all dead. If it doesn't, whatever, however it does it, whatever it does, however this place is put together, my problems are where I stand and where I move about. And C.S. Lewis had it on, on point long before I was uh, around uh, that uh, this is an ongoing problem. You are divided in yourself. You're divided amongst yourselves. You're divided on the issues. And you use those to, uh, to dust up about. And all the time, the people that know that are actually taking that as an advantage, exploiting you. And I don't know why... Why that? Everyone says it, but I don't know why anyone under. It's like giving lip service to that point, and you continue to be divided. You continue to spend tons of time on information you you will never do anything with, and just passing information is never going to do anything. Are you putting it in your information for your bag of tools to advance what you've decided is something you want to focus on? It's really going to start to tell the truth. And as I asked the woman that I've known for. Years doing the good work, trying to make life better around. I said, how, lo how long have you been doing this that I've known you to do this? Good work, well-intentioned, and how far have you gotten doing it the way you've been doing it? It had to be acknowledged that the, there hasn't been very much progress over decades, folks. And so, and the um, only experience I have now is when I observed that decades ago, and I shifted over into doing other things a different method, we've been able to move things along, however slow. Again, and again, that's just a, that's a problem of, of the population. There's only a few people pushing the wagon. We need a whole lot more. What I try and get you all to do behind the woodshed, and likely why I don't have many followers, why I don't have many listeners anymore, uh, compared to Oracle Broadcasting, uh, why I don't uh, see much follow-through in the people. It's just a fact. I don't know what more to say. So, it very, I just fat, captivated on how the, the statements have been made before. The people know. People wrote. People have given us notice, and we'll disregard it. We'll pass this information around like I got it. I didn't know about this before, the C.S. Lewis statement. Uh, how many other times have I said that? I've seen that written. Not said it, but seen it. And, and it, it fill, fills in right exactly what I've been explaining to you all, uh, how this is going to – you have to acknowledge this is in you. You're, it's in you, the problem, and you're going to have to fix you before you have to – Move out before you can move out. And you don't have to fix you can perfect because that's not a, you're not perfect and you won't be. But you, you become functional again, functional against your oppressor, functional against the captive, and function quit being an accessory to the crimes against you. At least one crime. Start with one crime. You don't have to do all of them. 
And so, how, you know, and here's was the underwritten by uh, C.S. Lewis, Lewis said this was written by Uncle Screw Tape. The Screw Tape letters that kind of made set the theme for today. Uh, uh, screw drivers, Screw drivers was in the news a few weeks ago. I just want to let you all know how vulnerable we all are, and again, not to rely on. But we have to make our own path. We have to make our own protections. We are our own security uh, to the level that we can be. And without getting too far, I've just realized our, if you, for those of you that are searching out for Jefferson Money District on a search engine and don't see it, uh, we may be, uh, that website's being censored apparently. Uh, and at the same time, we got the website, the back end got hacked. I haven't figured out how, but I got it fixed. And uh, so we're being attacked at some level, whether or not it's just a, a black hat a, a hacker or it's an actual intention. But the way you're going to find Jefferson Money District now, uh, because we're, in this system of control is you have to go to the Russian Yandex website and you'll see uh, use that as a search engine and the Russian uh, ironically the Russian website will tell you show you put the American way up first where all the other search engines and uh, will not so uh, but here we have a, a, a screw uh, the screw tapes moves in onto the screw drivers all Microsoft certified drivers from Intel and then NVIDIA, AMD, and others all vulnerable. A major BIOS vendor, along with the likes of AMD and NVIDIA, Intel, Huawei, Huawei, okay, not Hawaii, but, and many others are offering drivers that have serious security flaws. A new report called Screwed Drivers from Eclipsium rev uh, revealed the worrying extent of the problem. And you could read about that. I won't say more and take more time. The point is, is our world is constructed and to keep us divided and vulnerable. And so we can uh, keep our, our those we can uh, buy into all those places, or we can learn that we have these vulnerabilities and limit the limit the attack surfaces. And part of the defense after I found out we got infiltrated uh, was to limit those limit limit more attack services since I couldn't figure out what the encroachment was. I still can't figure out how did they uh, actually who got in and how they did it. Uh, and so uh, they didn't deface the website or any. They were simply using the, the internals as the back end to use uh, advanced spam or malware. And the point is, this is, again, the government could have been doing this just like, and, and they could do it through these drivers. So this is a reminder. This report came out weeks and weeks ago. I'm having to possibly deal right through this. I have no no protection. If I'm using this, this digital system to benefit me and to communicate with you all, uh, it's a, a it's a vulnerable tool, and so we have to start uh, figure out. You know, this is a we've been entered into a screwed place. It's just a, the screws have been turned. C.S. Lewis knew about it and knew how to keep us how to keep us to from focusing upon those that turn the screws. And uh, another evidence of uh, handed to me here yesterday. I didn't have much time, but to look at it and, and take a note. You want to see, you want to keep moving how screwed this system is. We all talk about it. We all complain about it. We see it's so screwed that we say, well, I'm, not, I'm just going to wash my hands of it. Well, didn't, didn't someone wash their hands of the responsibility and hand their hand someone's life over to a, an angry, insane throng early in history? Don't we know that too? Yeah, so we understand that we shouldn't, we can't really hand off, wash our hands of something that we have a responsibility to make right. Uh, this video came along, and it's just a video linked to an 18-minute video for you all. When I get sent, it says, Two false charges in Electra, Texas. Prosecutor tries to add more pretrial, more at pretrial, and so much more. This is a indicative of the system you're up against. It's uh, no surprise to me. You have it on video now. It'll confirm every all the horrors that you thought the system was uh, screwed, uh, and it's screwed. Uh, set up against you, and it, you, I would ask you to re watch this, not to confirm your beliefs on how screwed it all is and how criminal the, the justice, just us system is, but look for it as object lessons of how you prepare in order to defeat that. Look for at it, and it, what I've been saying, this guy doesn't do, he actually comes to the point, do I file, or he's asking the question, maybe rhetorical question about doing a 42 USC 1983 lawsuit to come back at the system that he finds is corrupt from the prosecuting attorney to the judge 
uh, and maybe not the city police chief who asked the question, oh, I can write him a citation, but for what? When the gentleman who has handed the, the DVD of the evidence of the night, uh, the, the tape of the, the video of the, the, top, the cop stopping them wrongly, uh, was handed to the pro by the prosecutor, and the guy says, is this mine? And the prosecutor said, yes. And then the prosecutor wanted it back, and he wouldn't give it to him. The prosecutor went in to get the judge's help to put the co extortion on him. And the coercion, in the, in, within the video near the end, the police chief is called in to intimidate this guy, who did not buckle at all. And he, you have to look at what, you're, what he's doing. He did very, very well. There's some things that I wouldn't have done, but uh, he uh, confronts the sim it's simple, no, no anger, just does the things he has to do. As he was instructed by a NOLO press books that he found at the library, three of them, he tells you what they are. I will tell you, be careful not to rely only on those, and the things I tell you behind the woodshed are way beyond what NOLO would consider, I've ever seen them consider, uh, because it becomes your... A collateral attack, you have to know about, for my sense, you have to know that because that's what puts the pressure on them. That he then goes to, uh, here in the question, a rhetorical maybe, about going to an 18, 1983 civil rights lawsuit relative to the official's actions. And though the prosecutor then tries to come and intimidate him into saying that, you know, if it hadn't have been for the video, and if you were in a lesser place, a smaller town in Texas, you would not be treated this way. You would not have been able to do this in the 80s or 90s without the video. You, know, you would be mistreated and you would be going before a jury that if you had a criminal record at all, they would just find you guilty. And it would be like going into a town. It would be like experiencing the movie Deliverance. That's the just us system in Texas. For those of you who don't mess with Texas, they messed with you, folks. They messed with you. They messed with you everywhere. So this is an insight on what the real deal is behind the scenes, a video taken by the gentleman's son. He does some very good things. He anticipates the problem. He doesn't make the kind of record that I would have made at the point of contact. And I've talked to you about this before, but I'm not going to second guess the man. He was looking at two cops that were threatening him, uh, but I just want you to know, remember, and one of the things that really gets me is when, if you look in the beginning of the video, they said, the cops say, and I've told you this before, they'll tell you, we don't know you. You could be some of this, some criminal, some that, some car, th whatever. You're some, some criminal. We don't know you. The gentleman goes his own way, but I would make an objection there that the, his, the cop's duty, if he doesn't know me, was to presume my innocence, not my guilt. In fact, to presume my guilt is a felony under state law, and you have to go read where in your state extortion and coercion is, as I've explained it before, and conversion of your right to be innocent and the property of that. See, there's one's property is extortion. I'm talking a little bit fast here, maybe too much and maybe out of turn. I just thought about that. I get going, folks. I don't know what to say. It's, a, it's an idea I get. There are things he could have made a record for at the time to change the dynamic and the power the cop had. As I've told you before, it's not an argument. But you a stand. You have to have a better thought in your brain than like I've told, told you about just thinking that, oh, am I detained or this and that. That's not enough. You can start there, but you have to be moving. In this case, the cops almost always to justify their existence on you when they don't have probable cause, and that's one of the things you stand on. But when they go to this next level, they say, well, we didn't know you. Well, you could be some sort of criminal. You turn it around and say, well, you took an oath of office that your duty was to presume me to be innocent. And now you violate, you've stolen that from me. And that's not within your job duty. And so that's a, under state law, that's a felony. And so you start establishing and counter the, the argument because they get, they start amping up, these cops will amp up an authority they don't have. You see in the video how they continue. The whole system does not, there's no check and balance. You all know that that know that, but there's a way to deal with it. The gentleman deals fine enough with it. Then he has a question about learning about 1983. Well, that's your civil rights, folks. That's a federal court case, and you, that's a big deal, and you have to know about that. So before you start thinking you know stuff, you have that's a remedy. It is there, but it's under Ku Klux Klan Act for freed people. And this is when you start looking at the federal law and you see seeing what's out there for you, you're going to realize it's been this place did change after the Civil War. 
And it wasn't in favor of people. It does give a, a remedy, but it requires a whole bunch of abuse before you get there. And I, and then, you, if you don't set your record up first, and you allow the, di the dialogue to go against you, you could, and you're not paying attention exactly to what's being said, you'll also hear that, that this gentleman doesn't know whether the audio that, he ha that they have are going to give him is any good to prove out what they said, but at the time, he didn't hear or see certain things that later ended up being good for him, but he didn't know that for months before he got, or we, many weeks before he got to see the DVD, where the cops are actually admitting they don't have probable cause. They admit, you see the video where they are searching without any reasonable belief, where they make up uh, uh, stories about that. You see later the prosecutor defending that by not prosecuting it, by threatening the guy in the future. You see the judge complicit in this violation. You see the city, the city uh, the chief. He's not going with that though. He goes, I can cite, write the citation, but what's the charge? No, he said he would be compliant to write the citation. That's a problem. But what's the charge? That's a secondary after effect. So he's willing to write. He's presumed to be able to write. He wants to write that citation. Just give me some teeth. Instead of saying, well, what's the probable cause before I can? You see, there's a little bit of corruption in that response. Get this video, look at it. K kudos to the guy for getting it to where it was. The, the, the case goes down in flames uh, be, because they, they were setting it up. And it was, here's the, here's the other takeaway, it was because there was a video. And the threat to you all is that if you get into a lesser place where they don't have it, now you can kind of see why certain jurisdictions don't want to get cop cameras and verify that the cameras are on. And you haven't made the policy that says if the camera goes off, there's a presumption against the official, the officer's witness, because the cameras have to be always on. In other words, you make the camera on a part of the job duty, like, it, like the badge and the gun is. You go in and make a policy change. So you try to guarantee these cameras on. The, 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 the district attorney explains the condition to you all. And without these cameras, this guy's case would have turned uh, different. And I have to agree. He was telling the guy, telling the guy the truth. This prosecutor was, but he was telling him on the, on the fraud that he that he was derelict in his duty to stop the cops from doing that and to not go into try to bring and bring the the judge in who was willing to come into the to the corruption into the organized criminal uh, coercion and extortion, but that the camera was the all the difference. That you are now given notice, if you will accept it, to now have cameras, cameras, I said, on your vehicles running, and preferably, if you can afford it, a, a, a service that uploads this video to servers. Because without it, and I was telling you this before, this just confirms what I've told you before as well, you may not have the evidence to counter what has become a blanket license to violate the law, because everybody knows it's going to be covered up all the way through the whole justice system because it's not a system of just uh, justice. It's just them that invaded your land and you didn't stop. But you need the video. You need the evidence. You don't need your opinion and you don't need uh, what you think about how it works. You need to start looking at this thing, this place wired against you in every moment, whether that's technologically or in the real life where you live, where you breathe where you walk, where you travel, and you're going to have to have a better insight. This this video, Two False Charges in Electra, Texas, as it starts in the YouTube title, is a start for seeing how to start to be, do that. But be careful, every event is different. It may not have turned out so well. He says the prosecutor knows this and tells him in a threat that says sometimes you're going to find worse cops than these guys. But we know that's the case, but my point is, what are you going to do about that? We're not supposed to have worse cops that that a, that a district attorney knows about, or that judge allows to exist. And that's a truth. That's a reality. And if you don't address your, you don't address it for that reason, or you think you can put your head in the sand, where you have the ability or you've come up against this, you are going to allow in the future someone else to be treated worse, and they'll mistreat you to the extent that you allow it. And this is what I've been telling you. You have to have the knowledge and defend yourself. This guy, this guy didn't have an a, attorney. He did it on his own.
So, how screwed is it? This video will tell you how screwed it is. It's what I it's it's what I tell you how to counter as I'm telling you what you do and what you see in this video. You just take it out of a traffic scenario and put it into a code enforcement. It, that's traffic is just a code. It's the motor vehicle code. Code enforcement for like property. That's just code enforcement. Uh, whatever the whatever the subject matter rule is for that. It's just code. It's all the same stuff, and it's likely corporate. But it doesn't matter. You can call. Oh, it's corporate law. It doesn't matter when they got the gun into your head. You have to be able to defeat all of it. And it doesn't take that much. You'll see how simple it is to do what the guy did, although he had to go through it. So this is another violation. And I'm building up to something that came up as a court case. These violations are. At the moment they happen, not after someone decides the violation, the, the, the trespass. And if you were to do what I was saying, you bring up the road law counter to their, their saying that you did a violation. In this case, this video is on the so-called welfare check. And like I said, when, when they went to the say, well, we don't know who you are. You could have been some criminal. He said, but you're, you took an oath. You have a uniform. You took an oath. Your duty was to presume me innocent. The failure to do that's a felony in this state, even if he's just passing through the state. Now you're going to change the dynamic. Now, I don't know that that's going to make it easier on you. What you're doing is you're making a record that establishes that they don't have the upper hand here, and you're not going to let them continue to call you a criminal and proceed that you might be until they find out different. That's one thing I would have done a little different in my mind and how I saw that come down in putting myself in that con condition. You have to do that. You have to put yourself there in that night. You do have to make up some ideas on what, how it come at you because you're not sitting there. But you can get closer to what it really is that you need to be considering. After, you, after the fact, you can see now before the well, fact in the instance what you say. Why I tell you if it gets really hairy, you need to, you need to get, you need to up, ramp up how you change the dynamic. You'll notice they controlled. That's one thing I want you to notice I've talked about before in this video. The cops control the conversation the entire time. Now, he has responses, but you also listen for the times he doesn't have a, an immediate response. That was where I realized, no, he had to have an immediate response in a certain area to counter their questions. He has to change their question to a question, but a violation as well. And you start to learn how to counter that by using what? Not your opinion, because they talked, they threw that at him as well. They challenged him of his knowledge. You have to have the citation in your mind, or as I tell you, the bag of law. The bag of law. I know it, for him he was passing through Texas. He needed to have some law, though. As a, You need to do this. This is your traveling papers are the law you may be subject to and understand it. And I'm not saying I like it, but it's it's the work, it's the imposition that the occupier has put on you. And this is telling you you don't live in the place you thought you were, and so you might you can very well just throw it, toss it all out, and you better rethink it. Like I told I told the the visitor to the Jer Jefferson Mining District meeting, you have to acknowledge you're dealing with those in a in a big garbage can. It's trash. You can't make the, the excuse that any of it's any good. And that said, you don't try to pull it out and fix it either. You have to take a step back and say, oh, I'm going to empty that trash. i gotta, I got to clean that trash can up. How am I going to do that? That's a wholly different story. That's a whole different approach. In fact, by stepping back, you give yourself that distance. I'm suggesting look at this uh, two false charges in electric video and start to think about what I've been saying relative to this guy's victory in a way. Because his victory was that he avoided the penalties that the prosecutor says were going to happen. That's a big win. Then he has the question of whether he's going to go to the remedy for that, that invalid, unlawful imposition. But that that remedy is not, not such a good deal when you look at it, when you find out what it's all about. But it tells you the truth, and you have to acknowledge, you have to realize that. And for me, when I started to see this, what civil rights was and the vindication of those, and whom was the status that is to, is to get those, I realized that I had to go a different way, and I realized I had to rethink how I approach uh, the condition. And that started to lead me on to what I've been telling you, how to approach this condition so that you take it out of you being a victim as a, as a freed uh, slave, essentially, and 
into the rights that you had, like as a grantee, as I tell you. You're a first-class citizen, not a last-class citizen. Uh, again, citizen, don't, don't get worried about that. You're within a body politic that you agree because you still stay there. And I'm suggesting to you a lot of the good protections in this place are there. It's that very few people know about it or how to set the record that they're being violated and insist on them correctly. How screwed is this place? A court suspends two prosecutors' law licenses for covering up brutal police brooding. Uh, police brooding, yeah. Police beating. I'll get it right. The Missouri Supreme Court unanimously, unanimously suspended the law licenses of two prosecutors in St. Louis on Tuesday for covering, uh, covering for a detective who beat and ha a handcuffed suspect, jamming a gun in his mouth and beating him with a chair in 2014. You need to read this story to find out that the prosecutors will co try to cover up for these cops, in this case a detective. It's bigger the problem. It's bigger that the, what's lost in this, in this report uh, in a way, is the fact that these prosecutors were allowed to come back after the suspension will come up, even though they were willful in their disregard of their duty to stop the crime in the first place. In other words, the Bar Association is going to allow these people to come back, or petition to come back, even though they violated the most sacred honor that they were supposed to uphold as prosecutors. Th this should have been a permanent a permanent sanction, a, 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 dismiss, a permanent uh, dismissal. They should have lost all kinds of rights for this being officials. But this is, again, when you see these people getting away with this kind of stuff, then you realize you're not in, that, you're not in the law. You're in, in what I, we can identify as distinction as legal. You're in, the, you're in no different than that previous video I was talking about, the prosecutor giving the riot act to the guy who they've wrongly attacked and he and he correctly addressed. Remember, he was pressed to do that, and he did. He shouldn't have been pressed, but he was. That's the reality. And these people, this next story tells you, it's pretty consistent across the country. It doesn't matter where you go. These prosecutors are criminals. The cops are criminals, and they cover each other up. And anybody who's involved with the system knows that, and that's why a lot of you won't deal with the system. And I've learned that you start dealing with them as criminals. Now, what you have to do, you don't just, it's not an opinion. You go to the black and white, you see their duty, you find a duty that they owe to you. And it's getting harder and harder to do a little bit, I guess. But you find the duty they owe to you, and then you show how, not by your opinion, by the fact they failed to do that. They become a criminal right there. And they become a criminal at multiple levels, and then you have to articulate that. It's not your opinion. If you walk in there and say that the prosecutor violated my rights, that means nothing. You have to articulate how. You have to find what was the guideline. You have to put down what it was that they were supposed, the guideline they were supposed to know, and that's not even enough, as you find out recent court cases say they can even be ignorant of the law. That's why the point of first contact problem is, is such a, is, it becomes a problem if you don't say the right things, because that's the time you're, you have the opportunity to tell them what they're supposed to know. And you give the citations. Now, you may or may not have the ability to do too much. The point is, is you, do, you do as you can. You don't stand, you don't wave the red flags when they're going to beat you down. Well, unless they're already beating you down. I mean, whatever you can say, you can say. But, I mean, this is the problem. Why are we even talking in that regard? This is not supposed to come to that level. Why is it we have care, you know, well, wellness checks that cause the death of people. It needs to tell you something, and you need to start responding to that, I guess is one thing. But it, it, this prosecutors are universally, universally corrupt. Bar associations, universally corrupt. But again, it's not opinion. Cite this, cite these issues. They'll say, oh, it's not across the board. They say, no, you just haven't caught it yet. Yes, it's across the board. Why? Go look at their, at their prosecution victories. They're 98%. And then how do you prove that that's a, a, a correct, a, 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 that, the, that that view that that's wrong is correct? You show where whatever subject matter you're in could not be applied to you. And so you're another example of that violation. And I can't even, I mean, that's a hypothetical thing. If I'm talking about property and ingress and egress, you show how the, the, they violated your grant for ingress and egress by 
mis, uh, mis, uh, defaming you and mischaracterizing what you do as commerce. And so you, there's no check and balance for that. And these people don't are supposed to be there to do that, and they don't. That's their violation. Don't complain about it. Write it down. Take note of the violation that they owed you the duty, not the job, not the idea, not the opinion. And uh, apparently it gets bad enough, a court will suspend the law license. No, the problem is, you see, the court didn't eliminate the ability to get the license. No, these people are going to come back. This is the occupying force, sustainable occupying force. It's so, you have to make, you have to assert your, be knowledgeable of how you assert your rights. You, you have to do that. Otherwise, these people do what they do, and they may do it anyway. And what I've been learning is part of that reasoning is here, because we only, let's say that gentleman, he, he had the evidence in the video that they had claimed that they didn't have the right to do what they did, so he had them there, but that's not a remedy for the having to deal with it, is it? And then his next choice is, let me go to the Ku Klux Klan Act for remedy. That's your Civil Rights Act under Title 42, Section 1983. Now, why would he want to do that? But this is, this is how we're trained. And why would that be the only portal that, portal that he has for getting a remedy against that? We'll show you how occupied you are as a people, and long before we all been long before we all been alive. I don't think there's anybody that could be listening to me that could be old enough to not be part of the the oppression that's been put on us that no one stopped. And another on another on hand, that makes people like me a little bit looking crazy to uh, have an idea we have an ability to come back. I mean, no one even has a clue. And I'm not. Everybody's even well-meaning. So I was talking to. The visitor to the district. These, all these people are not not wrong wrong in what they're doing. They're not wrong in their perceptions. That there's a system that's to set up a condition that you have to speak in a way. And I can't say that it's the wrong way either, because when the way I explained how you make it correct and how you show the violation, it was immediate. And that little adjustment was. It makes all the difference. And that's what I've been asking you all here behind the woodshed to do. You make this subtle adjustment. You don't let you learn what the lines are, where the lines are, and you lo don't let them drag you over the line. You make sure that you hold them short. And that can be a little bit of work until you get it understood. And when when you get it understood, it's you re you know them when you see them, folks. That's why I keep saying you'll know them. You'll they'll you will see you will see dead people. And so you can't take their word for it. This is another theme. This, you can't take their word for the how things are, but you can take their word for the fact of how screwed the system is and how bad they want to treat you. You don't have to take their word that they're right. And uh, behind the woodshed, I've been telling you about property law, and I've been telling you that the Supreme Court's got it wrong. In fact, we were able to identify again as recent as Tim's that they did it again. Well, another case just popped up uh, that the Supreme Court now, again, this is the opinion of the guy behind the woodshed. The Supreme, got the Supreme Court just got the decision right on a case, but for the wrong reason relative to what I know about property law. But they tell you the truth about the condition consistent with Tim's. And so this is a case that just came out of Pennsylvania. Farmer wins Supreme Court case that finds that federal property rights are equal to other constitutional rights. Have I paused long enough? Are you stunned? Did your jaw hit the ground? That was even a question, folks? Well, yeah, see, in 1985, they took that traditional view, that law-based view, away. And they said that people that are accosted by the government have to go through the state's provisions of laws before you can get to your federal remedy, which is what? It happens to be this same Ku Klux Klan Act, what they call the Civil Rights Act. What they'll reference is the Title 42 to 1983. I've told you that's not the truth. That your relation back doctrine relative to the grants and your rights predate the, that act as remedy. And they have to give it to you. This case is very interesting. It's a little bit convoluted because of the way they're getting at it. That's why I hesitate to tell you 
about what you're going to read out of it. But you definitely need to, need to read this like you need to read that Tim's case. Because the focal point becomes the same problem in this place, but the Civil War changed it. And I'm telling you from before I told you this case, I said they are interpreting this completely wrong. In 1985, they made a change about how they interpreted when you're harmed and when you could go to the federal government, when in fact, even under the Ku Klux Klan Act, it did not state you had to exhaust your remedies. It was an independent collateral remedy to the state remedy, which you actually should have. But because you can't get it at the state, it tells you, again, you don't live in the place you were promised. And you didn't keep it. Pennsylvania Farmer Wins Supreme Court case that finds the federal property rights are equal to other constitutional rights. Do you, Folks, how could that even be a question? The United States Supreme Court, and yes, it was, and they they ruled against this. And the, and the so-called liberal view inside the court was against this decision because it was a closely held decision. shouldn't have been because it's law of the land, but you see how corrupt the Supreme Court is. I've been telling you that this the way they've been treating this condition is improper. This court case comes back and changes the 1985 precedent, so-called. It's in quotes as precedent because someone challenged it. In fact, they now say it's not conditioned. But guess what we've had to do, and guess what I suggest that you do? When you go in, instead of going through this Ku Klux Klan Act, the Civil Rights Act, I keep saying that for a reason. Think about who you are when that law was set up to protect whom they were protecting against the people that were in the, uh, in the Ku Klux Klan organization. It has to tell you something about what's going on here. The property rights became less than a constitutional rights issue. It's astonishing to me since the Second, Fourth, and Fifth Amendments sit there. Since the power to dispose land sits there in grants. This could not stand. Yet the liberal court did not agree with the change. Which is simply to go back and says, well, the law is a, 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 an independent remedy. And then they didn't go far enough here. This is where I will bring in and tell you how you have to do a little different. You have to show through, the, and you read this court case, if you start to learn what you're reading for, you will notice that they claim that you, if you have a remedy at law, in other words, you have monetary damages you can get, then you don't have the right and equity remedy. Then you have the right, uh, that the, like let's say the Tucker Act they'll talk about, the, the right uh, to get money excludes, uh, d defeats your ability to have equity. And I've been telling minors and everyone else that's in property, you have to state that the courts will not recognize the property, because that's where it's all going. And therefore, without a remedy in recognize the property is not recognized, the courts the, themselves, the district attorneys for the government themselves are committing a, a, a takings. And therefore, there is no way to get to the money. And that re-invokes the equity remedies, which are different but similar. And you get at them a little differently, is what I've been telling you, because of this very problem that the Supreme Court says, oh, we got it wrong. Oops. And I want you to think about this, too. Since 1985, people have been beat down relative to takings issues in the Fifth Amendment because of this 1985 decision. And why you have to have a better thought in your brain on how you get at these people. The United States Supreme Court on Friday ruled in favor of a Pennsylvania farm owner who said, Farm, folks, this is the Disposal Act to a Purpose grant, is what they're talking about here. Yet you'll never hear it talked about that way. And this is our problem. You have to see it. And when you see it this way, you'll be able to argue better. You won't be going through the Ku Klux Klan Act because the Ku Klux Klan people d uh, harmed you as a freed slave. Ruled in favor of the Pennsylvania farm owner who said government effectively took her property without paying for it. Rose Nick won the victory in the case of Nick versus Township of Scott. In making its ruling, SCOTUS overturned a 1985 precedent Williamson County Regional Planning Commission versus Hamilton Bank in Johnson City. And then we can go to the Supreme Court hearing um, uh, the opinion, which I'm going to do, and I'm probably going to read it. I think I will read it. It's important, although it's a little bit odd to read, because I keep interjecting the 1885, 1985 reasoning, which is invalid to try and prove why their current 
what, why they have to return to the tra so-called traditional uh, traditional reasoning. Uh, this uh, Nick was representative of Pacific Legal Foundation. My problem with that is that we find out that the Pacific Legal Foundation will not actually account present the law, and the law would have actually still overthrown this case and shown that the right didn't have to come through the 1983 uh, Act, the, the Section 1983 Code uh, for remedy, and you would still have an equity an equity right because the violation can't be paid for, folks, if you understand what I've been telling you. You can get paid as a monetary value, but they call it market value. That's a violation because your property was disposed not through commercial side. It was through grant. And so they violate you by saying it's market value, but, but that's really their, that's a mark, it's a commercial condition, uh, uh, environment. So that's the only thing that they can speak to you in. But they don't, you can't, cannot be paid. There's no money they can pay you for the violation of the taking itself. They can only compensate you for the value of what it was that was taken and understand it's been taken and they agree that that's okay because you've been paid. When in fact, it's not just the payment in this case. You'll hear this case say it's, it, you have, they have to pay up front. And, and we've argued this, and if it's an argument, and we presented this for years in our documentation through Jefferson Mining District and our lawsuit. That the even in the Constitution, you'll see the appropriations have to be there. That when the legislature doesn't appropriate money for the punitive harm they're going to wreak when they come to take your property, they anticipate they're not going to do it lawfully. But that's not the end of it, and that's the problem with this case. This case says that that's the end of it. That money's the end of it, when in fact it's not, because there has to be a due process that gets there, and the standard is that the government has to prove private use. The problem is that's all it can prove. And when you get into grant law, congressional disposals that the state's supposed to recognize and the government, Congre Congress is supposed to protect in their grant and guarantee to you, they cannot, they cannot take from you unless they can show higher value and the values that are grants to disposal are actually the highest use. In fact, it's stated in one state, you have to go find this stuff, in one state it's stated that, let's say, for a mining property, and even the use of water for mining, in that particular case, use of water for mining is a public use, a public benefit, and a public necessity. It's not just a public use, folks. It's got two higher ratings than the government has the ability to claim against. And so it's not just the money they give you. There has to be a due process where the government stands up and says, we have the right underneath this provision of the Constitution to take because our public use is higher than your public use. This is totally lost on this issue. Let me go back to the title of that case in 1985. Is all telling. I told you your, you've been, your counties were done back in the 80s when they loaded up your, your laws to take things away. Will, uh, Williamson County Regional Planning Commission, regional planning is the use, one of the usurpations, folks. Regional planning, regional, is international. It's not known in the United States for whether you have county power. Regional happens to be the conglomeration of counties and subverting their power. And no one stepped up to, to identify that. It's what I was saying here earlier, uh, the governor of Oregon, after they lost the carbon tax, declared war on the rural areas, and they were going to come through the uh, regional solutions network. In fact, it didn't even take a day that she had declared that, and now two days we see the agenda. This is all predictable, folks, if you know what's going on. We've interceded to show that the statement on the, f on the agenda form was fraud because it stated that there was county representation when, in fact, no county representation was going to attend. How simple is that, folks? Just be attention, paying attention to the de simple little details. Anyway, so Regional Planning Commission in 1985, these things was subverting our nation way back when. Before, you want to talk about Agenda 21? Yeah, this is it. Way back when. You think it's a, it's a coming thing and it's been around just now because we've had the Internet? No, it's been in place for a long time. So let me, before I, you can read the story here about who did it and what they've done. Uh, Pacific Legal Foundation anticipated for me, I'm not going to see the actual law of the land imposed. I'm going to see something short. It ends up coming out for my interpretation. That's exactly what happens, because why? In a nutshell, they claim your Fifth Amendment right 
Now, if you have a Fifth Amendment constitutional right, the United States Constitution, uh, against uh, takings, wouldn't that be addressed directly, folks? When you read this story, you're going to find out a little secret. Now, I don't agree that that's the only, this is the only way, because you do have that direct right, but you're not going to get it when an attorney presents your property improperly. You have a direct right to the Fifth Amendment Constitution, but you, do, you don't have to go through the Ku Klux Klan Act, and this case tells you that you do. And that was all set up because of the way the record was set up in this case that the Supreme Court got to decide this way. Nick versus Township of, of Scott, Pennsylvania, et al., Search your area, United States Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Argued October 3rd, 2018. Re-argued on January 16, 2019. And decided June 21st, 2019. The Township of Scott, Pennsylvania, passed an ordinance requiring that all, quote, all cemeteries be kept open and accessible to the general public during daylight hours, close quote. Petitioner Rosemary Nick, whose 90-acre rural property was a small family graveyard, has a small family graveyard, was notified that she was violating the ordinance. Nick sought declaratory and injunctive relief in state court on the ground that the ordinance affected a taking on her property, but she did not bring an inverse condemnation action under state law seeking compensation. The township responded by withdrawing the violation notice and staying enforcement of the ordinance. Without an ongoing enforcement action, the court held Nick could not demonstrate the irreparable harm necessary for equitable relief, so it declined to rule on her request. Nick then filed an action in federal district court under 42 U.S.C. 1983, alleging that the ordinance violated the takings clause of the Fifth Amendment. The district court dismissed her claim under Williamson County Regional Planning Commission Hamilton Bank of Johnson City uh, in uh, 743 U.S.C. 172, which held that the property owners must seek just compensation under state law in state court before bringing a federal takings claim under 1983, the Third Circuit affirmed. Held, and this is going to be the only thing you can rely on is this holding, notwithstanding the dicta, the statements, the concepts, the, the discussion that goes on in the rest of the case, which can be instructive. This is what you're gonna, your takeaway is from the court. Number one, a court, a government, a government violates the taking clause when it takes property without compensation and a, and a property owner may bring a Fifth Amendment claim under Section 1983 at that time. A. In Williamson County, the court held that as relevant here, a property developer's federal takings claim was, quote, premature because he had not sought compensation through state court's inverse condemnation procedure. The unanticipated consequence of this ruling was that a takings plaintiff who complied with Williams, let me see, do I want to go back? I'll read this through. The anticipated, con I just want to point out something, the unanticipated consequence, folks. This is supposed to be in law. There's not supposed to be an unintended consequence. Now, there can be, and I can conceive it, but because they didn't follow the law of the land, in the land, and they didn't follow the strictness of the grant remedies, they got themselves into an unintended consequence. So, let me go back and read this. The unintended consequence of this ruling was that a takings plaintiff who complied with Williamson County and brought a compensation claim in state court would, on proceeding to federal court after unsuccessful state claim, have the federal claim barred because the full faith and credit statute required the federal courts to give preclusive effect to the state's court decision, citing another Remo Hotel court case. B. This court has long recognized that private property owners may bring Fifth Amendment claims for compensation as soon as their property has been taken, regardless of any other post-taking remedies that may be available to the property owner, citing Jacobs. 
the court departed from that understanding in Williamson County and held that the takings gives rise not to a constitutional right for just comp to just compensation, but instead gives a right to a state law procedure that will in eventually result in just compensation. Just two years after Williamson County, however, the court returned to its traditional understanding of the Fifth Amendment, holding that the compensation remedy is required by the Constitution in event of takings. First English Evangelical Lutheran Church case. A property owner acquires a right. A property owner acquires a right to compensation immediately upon an uncompensated taking because the taking itself violates the Fifth Amendment, citing San Diego Gas and Electric Company. The property owner may, therefore, bring a claim under 1983 for the deprivation of a constitutional right at that time. Well, I just I want to interject here. There's so much to say on every one of these sentences. To bring a better understanding, so I'm going to continue reading, and hope I'm hoping you're paying attention. This is a that's why I hesitate to read court cases, but this is another one that's very important to understand. Again, what I've been telling you about how when a violation happens is immediately, not in time and over time, and they can't pull you along to lead you by the nose to your defeat. And this case reinvigorates that. Idea that was an idea, I guess, because they weren't following it. But anyway, let's go back to C now, back in the list of the holding. Quite a holding, quite long, and so we can take good good suggestion here on moving forward. Williams County, Williamson County understanding of the taking clause was drawn from Ruckel's House versus Monsanto, where the plaintiff sought to enjoin a federal statute because it affected a taking even though the statute set up a mandatory arbitration procedure for obtaining compensation. Let me interject this. Remember now, when you're doing injunctions, you're doing equity. When you're seeking monetary money, money as, the, as your result, that is an action at law. And so when you hear this thing about injunction, that's in equity. That means that there's claiming that they had no reasonable remedy at law. And this is another thing you have to understand. You have to understand how to keep reading here. Hold your mind to what is going on, what they're talking about. This uh, this case in, let's say, Ruckelhaus was an equity issue, and it's now looking at a support that was talking to some action at law, even even though statute is legislative, where it's Section 8, 1983, to freed slaves. So I'm hoping you're picking up this little hitch in the giddy-up already. But that case does not support Williamson County, however, because Congress, unlike the states, is free to require plaintiffs to exhaust administrative remedies before bringing constitutional claims. Williamson County also analogized that the new state litigation requirement to federal takings practice under the Tucker Act, but a claim for just compensation brought under the Tucker Act is not a prerequisite to a Fifth Amendment takings claim. It is a Fifth Amendment takings claim. It is the Fifth Amendment taking claim. This is what I've been telling you about the distinction. There may be a harm to the value of the property, but it doesn't stop the harm of the violation itself. That I would I can't see any I haven't found any place that's that is an other than an equitable remedy because you can't there's no money you can pay to fix that. You're just not supposed to do it. Equitable compensation can inform by by um penalty the wrongdoer in the for doing such. That's not a monetary claim for the value of the lost property. That's different. And again, so you keep your mind clear on how we're going through this. And they're focusing it on at law. Uh, and they're saying that the line of reasoning for this condition through these other court cases was not proper in the holding itself, which you can then rely on. Williamson County also analogized, like I read that, excuse me, the Tucker Act comes up here. This is a very important problem. The Tucker Act is, creates a whole other set of things. I won't get it to say it's hard, but you do have to understand what you're talking about. This is where you can make a claim under 1983 the property, the property value of which for the takings is required to what they call bifurcate the case and go to the claims court. 
the rights violation by the state official is what you prosecute under 1983, not the takings. And so when you get into these Tucker Act cases in federal court, and I'm not discussing the fact of the incompetence here under the legislative court problem. I'm just saying let's go ahead and let's look past that for the moment for the discussion here. In a Tucker case where you have a property value, money damage, that part gets cut away to go to the claims court, which is said to be Article 3. Now you see your personal vindication of federal rights in an Article 3 court. The one in the that remains in the district court is for the state official violation contrary to law that did that. These are two different types of cases. Oh, and I, okay, so what I'm saying is when you get to the claims court, in particular for minors, or if anybody that goes there and finds that they say you don't have a property, that becomes a takings without monetary monetary value, and that itself becomes a takings claim. When the courts themselves interfere with the existence of an existing a vest, a vested property, that's a diff. That's another case that immediately develops. Immediately is the point here. This court case says when the when the takings happens, it happens now, not in the future, relative to some remedy. It all this case also is saying that the one who is violated has the right to determine the remedy. Something else I've told you. You don't hand it to someone else. You keep that right. You don't allow someone to lead you by the nose on your rights. You, you don't have them then. It's pretty simple. This is pretty simple stuff, actually, and it's a universal application. We're talking about a farm owner here and a, an ability to, to declare the remedy they want was through Title 83. The court's saying you could do that. What I'm saying is that's not the only thing you can do, and I think the court here was remiss in not explaining a little bit clearer where they go on and on and on about the bad decision making they did in 85 to instead of clarifying how this thing really starts to work and I say that through how I've been researching how this what takings is how it works how it's been defeated in us and how the defeat is the ignorant the um, willful disregard of the existence of property which is completely consistent with a sustainable future you will not have property and the bar association members are going to make sure that you don't when you don't have property, you don't have a takings. When you don't have property, you don't need to have notice. You don't need to have due process. This is really another, this is a side of what this case is saying. And they fall so short to explain this that you may not ever hear this anywhere. The Tucker Act brings up a whole other set of conditions here. And they don't speak to this bifurcation problem. Now, here's part of the reason. Because the, the attorneys for Miss Nick, did not bring that. They brought that. They want the remedy. Wanted to go through 1983, which is totally. You'll hear in this case, it's totally within the right of the violated property owner to select. You'll hear it. I don't know if I'm going to get to it, but you're going to read the decision used to be in the 1880s that the one who was violated had the absolute determination on this. Something I've told you over and over. And so for those of you that are in property in this, this is not, a, I can't say this is the bee's knees of decision for property rights, but if you look inside what they used to re-support themselves after falling on their face in 1985, you'll see the rudiments, if not the dis, exactly what I've been telling you about what this grant law really does, what the law of the land really is. How you have a lot of power. How when they, anybody comes against that, well, now this case will allow you to identify quicker those that are interfering with these direct rights you acquire by the acquisition of the disposal. They become part and parcel. The, the appurtenances I tell you about that you, you don't hear in the bundle of sticks stuff that the Bar Association put on us in the same amount, in the same 80s. It all came through the 70s actually in the land use. See, the land use is, predates all this too. I'm telling you, your, 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 your property rights were taken down. They weren't taken away. They were covered over by these things that no one paid attention to because we, weren't a, we didn't keep ourselves educated as a people. And we keep, and I'm still reading. I'm, the holding is still reading here. Uh, maybe that's all we'll get to, but maybe enough. I, I don't know. Uh, this is such, in a way, this is really fascinating. It's really fascinating to watch a society that doesn't know all this stuff that sits right here. It's fascinating to predict that this uh, this kind of condition was wrong and now see for myself, see the Supreme Court reverse itself and bring it closer to what it's supposed to do. It does, they don't outlaw 
or in negate what I'm telling you is still there. They just don't tell people how to do it. And I think there, I, I believe, maybe this is, is my opinion, the Supreme Court ha has a duty to keep, again, they're supposed to do justice ultimately. They should keep people informed by how they decide, which requires that they do law, not just opine about it. And, I, and I, if, I, if that makes me sound a little bit arrogant that I know something more than them, well, i got a whole bunch of principles they are not applying here, and they've confined what they need to do because of the presentation of the attorneys. When I've read cases, again, in the 1800s and early 1900s, that the court would step in to do justice if the parties even didn't. When you read those cases, they actually inspire me into believing how great America could be. But do you know how little we actually experienced that? And then it got worse from that time <laughs> to the point that they now have to come back and say, oops, as a Supreme Court, declaring the law of the land, we messed up in 1985. And all you folks that happened in court cases that were subject to these limitations and then got beat down by the states that were taken over by our own members and you don't have the property rights you thought you had, so sad, too bad. We're moving on from here can't can't settle with people in any kind of justice way but this is how they've done it to us part of it so anyway this is a reading into this uh, this decision on what they don't talk about and what the ramifications are that I tell you that you may or may not think about that I want you to think about and why I interject here when I'm still reading middle C and we're not singing a song having to say hey wait there's a whole lot more here anyway I, I wanted to uh, read and not uh, not uh, talk and I, I can't hold myself folks there's just too much to to go through that I miss if I read through and don't respond. But then anyway, we'll keep reading here. Uh, prerequisite. So there's no prerequisites to a Tucker Act violation. Why? Because when your right is violated, it's not violated in the future. It's violated immediately. A taking, if you will, a theft, an extortion, a coercion happens immediately at the point. Not by whether or not you're going to get remedy or whether or not someone's going to extend the remedy or whether or not even what that remedy might be. You'll actually hear in this, I'll okay, keep talking. You'll actually hear here before this Tucker Act, you all went, we're supposed to go to Congress and get your remedies directly. And guess what? We're back to that time I'm having to consider, and this case actually gave me a heads up to, so that you know that I'm trying to pay attention. I'm trying to continue to learn the path. This case explains to me, now that I see it, and for sure, without a question, I can actually cite this, that if I can find a path through what was available to me that Congress did that doesn't fulfill the obligations to me as a property owner or vindicating what they call personal rights at the constitutional level, I can go back and petition Congress as they did back in the 1800s. If you didn't understand what I was talking about, how this disposal grant law that happened before the Civil Rights Act cuts through those limitations that they brought this case because of the request of the property owner who had the right to request it. She brought it through the, her attorneys brought it through the Ku Klux Klan Freed Slave Have Remedies Act. Okay, let me keep reading going back to this thing. The Tucker Act is not a prerequisite to a Fifth Amendment taking claim. It is a Fifth Amendment takings claim. But Peratt was not a takings case at all. And the analogy from the due process context, the due process context to the takings context is strained. The poor reasoning in Williamson County may be partially explained by the circumstances in which the state litigation issued reached the court. That's what I just told you, folks. Is it may be explained by how the case reaches the court. Why well, I can tell you to continue to tell you, you have to make your accurate record. A malformed record, malformed facts, or not sufficiently formed facts is what the court decides on. And we don't have courts anymore that will look deeper to say, well, we got an injustice going on that we need to fix. It's deeper to inform people. They don't do that anymore. I'm saying you have to do that yourself. That's what these people tell me now. And since we've been, I've been doing that and helping others like that, uh, that ask or have an inkling to do so to do it better, We've been seeing a different result, and most of the time we're on the we're being attacked. So we're trying to get the criminal to to say that they're a criminal. You know that's not going to happen. And because and this case explains to us that the ultimate court in the land gets it wrong. That we already know the claims court gets it wrong with the stealing of the property, making another takings on that level. 
that we have other problems than what you're going to find in the bare streets. But it's not going to come to a head until you in the streets go in the right direction and bring it present more than the common news that you see. The, the thing that the Epsteins and the pedophilia, and I'm not saying that's not an issue. For those that can do something about it, head it, head on. Go do something about it. Don't just talk about it. Uh, but that's really beyond a lot of us. Uh, the uh, outing, the, the, the government officials for not doing their duty and then bringing, because you can be adversely affected by those decisions and their failures that you can objectively find the duty they failed, that gives you standing to go start to make the notice to people how you go about to take them out. And that right now, there's not that remedy of accountability. It's all going to be about accountability. People are coming around to this stuff. It's amazing to me how I've been saying stuff for years, and finally through the Twitter, because that's about the only thing I have at all that is social responsive, uh, people come, I'm just wondering why, I mean, people come up with these, finally come to the principle, and I'm wondering where everyone's been. These are not hard to figure out. We're just now coming aware. So it makes a sense why we're crickets, but that's not an excuse either. But there's very basic principles to apply over and over and over that allows me to find this case and tell you, look at the president, the president of the Supreme Court was wrong. They caught themselves, and this is what they're saying, but this is what they pigeonhole you in, and this may be not a limitation but that's what the bar system is going to be focused on. And so you have a better presentation to make as you move this thing through. You stop becoming opinionated about all the wrong and victimization you feel. You go to the black and white that says, that here's what this says, here's what this means, and this is, I'm the one that has the right to say, and I'm saying this. And then you study to say the best thing you can for yourself. Because no one's going to do it for you. Uh, let me read back. Uh, let me go back and read this again. I, uh, I kind of got off, didn't I? Didn't I stop reading and started talking? The poor reasoning in the Williamson may be partially explained uh, by the circumstances of which the state litigation issue reached the court. That's what I've been telling you over and over. Which may not have permitted the court to adequately test the logic of the state litigation requirement or consider its implications. And I'm going to interject here again. That's what happened in this case. The way the attorneys presented the case, and in one regard, I understand there's a tactic. You take the step you can take. You don't try to take the journey. This may have been where someone, I hope they did it this way, if this is a, a reason, I hope they realized they had to take one step in order to get this thing overturned before they can take the next step to fully bring out what I'm telling you is actually there. And maybe more that I never, I've never known about yet until we see someone else who do, does understand the stuff that can explain it to us. This is strict. I see this is the same problem. This, this court was given a question of whether or not the, the, the owner of a taking, proper, a taking property has the right to choose a remedy and use 1883. And the court's coming back and saying, yes, it did, notwithstanding what we said in 1985. But that's all they looked at when, in fact, the, the, the whole ramifications to you all that have property, and whether or not you want to extend that to you or not, I don't know. Uh, you stateless people, I don't know. But at any rate, I don't know how deep you want to get into this property issue. I, I take it to full length. So it's, uh, this becomes very important to everybody, whether you see that or not. And so this is telling us that the, the courts may will actually give out a, a path of excuse to a prior court because they weren't informed correctly. This is one of your problems. They're almost intentionally uninformed, in, uh, uninformed correctly so that they can condition the outcome. That's another problem. Reading on, D now, the fourth point in the holding, respondents read too broadly. Now, this is the, this is the uh, Scott uh, municipality is the respondents, read, read too broadly the statements in prior opinions that taking ca takings clause, quote, does not provide or require that compensation shall actually be actually paid in advance of the occupancy of the land to be taken. But the owner is entitled to reasonable, reasonable certain, and adequate provisions for obtaining compensation after taking citing Cherokee Nation. Now, this is where they're in the holding. They're kind of going back and trying to explain how the 
the misinterpretation started. So I, I'm going to have to interject again. I, I, I don't know if I can really do this. The first few I could get past. I think I can find them again. But here, understand that they're talking. Uh, they're talking the word occupancy. For the miners, this is critical because the re regulation that they always are told that they have to comply with in the 3715 for BLM it is an as an ocu as an occupant, an occupant with a like a camp residence. It's and what they're talking about here in this court case that what a disposal is to farm owners and miners is an occupancy. You occupy your own land. It, it's not an occupant like some renter or uh, some place to live. This is a disposal. It's an occupancy. And you get those two words wrong, and they'll lead you by the nose and drown you. This is specific to the occupancy in this part, and take special note. That's what they're talking about. I find lots of problems with people who don't understand this, and so I'm going to make, that's why I'm making a bigger, uh, bigger issue of it. So, let me read, does the, they're talking that it was broadly accepted that it does not provide or require compensation in advance. Those statements concerned requests for injunctive relief. Remember, money has to do with cases at law and equitable considerations are in equity. Right? So that this is what, be careful to track here. The state's Meant concerned requests for injunctive revenue. There wouldn't have been a request for money at law compensation. There is equitable compensation, but it's not at law monetary compensation for purposes of taking compensation. And so if I'm making some confusion for people, please go read about takings. Go read about what compensation is. Go read about what equity remedies are and what they can provide. You'd be astonished, I think, for those of you that have been in the fight and got beaten down and, and just kind of even, you know, tagged out or, or whatever, or kind of feel that you're hesitant about moving through and not sure where and hear all this, all this knowledge from everybody, everywhere, all these ideas. Focus in on what you need to know. That you need to know the distinctions here they're talking about. You need to read these things for what they are. The subsequent compensation was at law, uh, but those cases were about equitable considerations, there is no compensation they could be talking about, so they can't, they're not applicable as a court precedent, is what the court is saying here. Uh, those uh, statements concerned requests for injunctive relief and the avail availability of subsequent compensation meant that such an equitable remedy was not available. And so when you find that there's compensation at law available, the equity, authority, your rights under equity cease, because equity is, in, is it created where there is no adequate remedy at law. It's by definition, folks. Why you'll hear me speak that you have no, you have no adequate remedy at law. And what I've identified is the system precludes that remedy at law, even though it appears to be a justice system. That you take as the harm precluding your compensation. In other words, you're predicting the state will not give you the, the, the due process is really just a, a fraud. It's in name and in color only. You learn how to identify, not by your opinion, you identify how that's going to be, you state it, and you then bring it back into your equity side, where there is no money to compensate this type of takings. This is just the worst, it's just a, I can't say priceless, this, this harm, can't, there's no value you can place it. In other words, to pay for that kind of harm does not pay for getting it back. See, these, these compensation on land is supposed to pay you for the use or the value of that was taken. That can be ascertained by certain methods. When you violate rights, there's no amount of money that you can violate, take the right and pay it to get it back. It's done. It's strictly in an equity consideration. And that's where I tell you late, right now, until things change, you think about how to bring it by however the facts you can find that show Essentially, the general jurisdiction of a state or a federal court is not adequate at law to fix your problem. Now you've done it. Now you've brought yourself in. You don't look for money. Now, it doesn't mean you don't get that there's money not available, but you're not going to get it as a monetary compensation at law. You're going to get it as an equitable compensation for the breach itself, irrespective of the value of the property. And that's a better way to say what I've been getting at here, what they're saying here, actually, in other in other words. The breach happens immediately 
when a state official violates your right under color of state law, Section 83 kicks in for your freed slaves. That is independent of the value of the property taken that is actually bifurcated out to the Tucker, Tucker jurisdiction, which is the claims court, which happens to be, as we're, we're told, an Article Three jurisdiction where under Article Three, not your territorial USDC courts, but Article Three courts are constitutional courts where you can vindicate your so-called personal rights. And so this is said, if you start looking at it this way, you start seeing there's a, there's a framework sitting in there. It doesn't function quite right. That's another thing you'll learn, but, but that's, it's there. Simply because the property owner was not entitled to injunctive relief at the time of the takings does not mean that there was no violation of the takings clause at that time. The history of takings litigation provides valuable context. At the time of the founding, there usually was no compensation remedy available to property owners who could obtain only retrospective damages as well as an injunctive injunction ejecting the government from the property going forward. But in the 1870s, as state courts began to recognize implied rights of action for damages under the state's equivalence of the takings clause, they declined to grant injunctions because property owners had an adequate remedy at law. Congress enabled property owners to obtain compensation for takings by the federal government when it passed the Tucker Act in 1887. And this court subsequently joined the state courts in holding that the compensation remedy is required by the takings clause itself. Today, because the federal and nearly all state governments provide just compensation remedies for property owners who have suffered a takings, equitable relief is generally unavailable. Generally unavailable. I've been asking you to find out you're the special case that generally unavailable does not apply. Is all I've been telling you all this time, and it states it right here. Look for your savings provisions in everything. Here's one right there. I just wanted to point that out as I was reading. Generally, with compensation available, equitable relief is not available. You make, that's in the general. You make yourself, not make it up. You find the facts to make you the special case where the equity gener jurisdiction is available. And like uh, for miners, when you can prove on court cases that they will not recognize and dispose land on the entrance of a mining claim uh, at the claims court as property, you've got a, you've got the equitable remedy reinvest, re, uh, reinvoked right there. Because though they purport to give monetary claim, the function of the court is to deny the property. That's a takings. And there's no remedy for that, and no amount of money will stop stop it, or or no amount of money will pay for that harm, will it? No, it's a breach of justice. What's that worth, folks? This is the whole point. What's this worth when you get down to the principles that are supposed to be being uh, adhered to that none of us seem to be uh, uh, getting? But maybe Mrs. Nick will, even though she's going to commit to be a freed slave that has remedy for civil uh, state officials taking her property without due process, without uh, under state law, without right. That's simply just a federal extortion statute. In this case, the right of the takings is acquired, that's not extortion, is it? That's coercion. And so in this case, that's a federal coercion statute, because the extortion is actually a takings that goes to the claims court in a bifurcated case. And I realize I'm talking fast again in all these big words. Keep just got to keep track of this. You just, this is your world. This is what your stuff, this is how this place was made, and we none of us seem to understand that. And because none of, not many of us understand this, is why we're partly in this problem today. And then we get C.S. Lewis telling us in 1942, before we was up, uh, most of us, uh, how, how we were going to be dis divided in ourselves, folks. This is what he's getting at at the end. We're problematic within ourselves, we're divided. And I told you this, how many times have I told you this? This heal ourselves up, and part of that is looking out in the world and finding something wrong that we need to make right. And if we start focusing that, we start to heal ourselves, and we stop being divided in ourselves we focus on, on one thing now, we have to en engage it as a whole, and then we also focus and cut out all the noise. And so we, what I've been offering here is speaks to C.S. Lewis, even though I didn't know of his words before, what he said, like many have said, and we say it over and over about how we stay divided and how 
those that uh, manipulate us and exploit us, make sure there's plenty of activities to keep us divided. And we keep absorbing it. Well, let me get back to the case here. Uh, today, because the federal court is nearly all state governments provide just that compensation remedy, uh, the owners uh, who have suffered a taking of equitable relief is generally unavailable. Don't be the general case. If you can't be a special case, then don't make it up. But don't be the general case. And the equity uh, remedies are available. You, uh, if you heard what I just said there, you start to realize how to exercise what you're reading and put it into potential practice. Like, again, when I read this kind of stuff before, years and years ago, the equitable relief in general was not unavailable. I said, well, what if I'm the special case? And then what does it take to become the special case? And there, now you're, now you're looking at this thing the way I start to see it, um, all these problems. Not all of them, but lots. This is just the way you first look for the special case. Ironically, <laughs> get into the federal rules for a public land use or forest service use, and you, what you're looking for is the specific case because the special cases are regulated. So be very careful in the subject matter. You get the right terminology, what I'm saying. In the, in the FLIPMA, the Federal Land Policy Management Act, specific equates to special, uh, the special case here. And special in the land use under administrative law becomes the general. And when you start to see this and you start to readjust your vocabulary as you read, it just kind of happens automatically for me now, you'll understand better how to decode this place and then what it's being asked of you uh, at some level or what you're being told in a regard if you're going to apply yourself what that tells what asks of you to do if you want to get something to happen uh, you know going on here I may get through this yet as long as an adequate provision for obtaining just compensation exists there is no basis to enjoin government action affecting a taking all that is is the definition imposition of the requirement that there's no adequate remedy at law that's all that's doing if you went to Wikipedia looked up injunction one of the four or five five uh, requirements, elements, to have an equitable remedy of injunction is that you can you state and show you have no adequate remedy in law. Number two now in this what's held, the state litigation requirements of Williamson County is overruled. Several factors counsel in favor of this decision. Williamson County was poorly reasoned and conflicts with much of the court's takings jurisprudence. Well, I really don't, I have to interject. This is where you have, to, you bring the law. This is where you, if you don't have any rights, you have no rights if you don't assert them. Notwithstanding the corruption that's been going on, it's still there to fix, and you have the power to do it. Mrs. Nick did so through, and I hopefully, well, probably through the attorneys, but, and that's why I think I have a problem with this, this case about how it only, it falls short, but it falls adequate to what she wanted. And that, you should take a notice of that, too, because it is what she wanted. She could have asked for otherwise, and she didn't. Uh, but anyway, any rate, here's the, the court's coming back and saying that the court itself poorly reasoned stuff. And so you, that gives, it's like you're finding out scientists or not. They're political lobbyists. You be the scientist. If you know there's a dome over this flat place, go with a camera on the edge and knock on the glass and show me the video. Stop talking and arguing. Otherwise, I uh, don't have time for it. I've got to focus on things like this that people are going to kill me if I, if I don't get this right because they think they, they're authorita. And they think their duty is to authorita me. And, I, and I've got to have a, a mind and a word uh, in my mouth to say, no, 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 you didn't have this, this, that. Your duty was here, and you failed, and now I mean, this is up to you. Now you go, you can continue your criminality, or you can understand a dynamic isn't the way you believe. In this case, no, I chose a remedy through 1984, I'm a, 1983. I'm a freed slave that has the right to the, under the Ku Klux Klan Act uh, to go after state officials. And the court is saying, yeah, you did have that right. We didn't have to drag you through the state provisions. That was absolutely wrong. But I'm telling you that means that, and they say here, your rights are violated in the media, immediately. And they are required to have compensation. And the inter, all the interference actually by the state court would have been an obstruction to a monetary remedy, isn't it? That brings and invokes the equity side again. 
if you understand what I've been kind of, if you've been tracking what I've been saying, you start to realize that this stuff is like chewing gum in a way. You just keep, how much do you want to chew on it? It's going to stretch and it's going to do, you have all kinds of ways to get flavor out of the gum, I guess. It depends on how integrated you are with it, how much you're going to focus, how much you're going to stop making excuses, how much you're going to focus on what do you want and how are you going to get it. And, and I've told you, right now we're in a position where it doesn't, you don't get it directly anymore. This case may tell us we, we should have been more direct. But I'm telling you there's another, they're not talking about this problem in the courts themselves. You hear it, you understand it. What I'm telling you is how you can see what it is so that you can then call it out when you move there. Anyway, so that's not beyond this point. Uh, so they're telling you that the, uh, the foundations were shaky in that case. The rationale for the state litigation requirement has been repeatedly recast by this court and the defenders of Williamson County. The state litigation requirement also proved to be unworkable in practice because the San Remo preclusion trap prevented takings plaintiffs from ever bringing their claims into federal court, contrary to the expectations of the Williamson court, uh, uh, County Court. Finally, there are no reliance interests in the state litigation requirement. As long as post-taking compensation remedies are available, governments need not fear that federal courts will invalidate their regulations as unconstitutional. No, because that's 1983 is their acts. The wrongful acts under color of state law to interfere with the right. And that's totally, in this court case, is totally independent of the value of that harm of the property interfered with. So you see, that's why they use bifurcate. There's two different problems going on. But the Ku Klux Klan Act, Civil Rights Act as you know it, tried to remedy in freed people and, and get, get those people remedy under legislative authority. Let me show you now. Uh, and I, okay, so that was the, the the end. I need to explain this part as I get here. So what? So so what this court case says is let's let's take away the choice of the of Mrs. Nick uh, in selecting it. This court case is saying you get your takings right through the Ku Klux Klan Act, folks. Now, if a takings let's let's, let's reason how that is not the only avenue. If since you have the right through the takings. Why must you vindicate your right through a Ku Klux Klan Act? If, underneath the grant and disposition of the power of Congress to dispose land and other property to you, or even the government to forbear from taking from you by those other, maybe other provisions, when the, the constitutional power and authority is up front, and there is an obligation to guarantee by that by that organization that's been established in the United States, United States Constitution and violated by the state by violating the domestic treaty called the Enabling Act. Don't you have a direct route underneath the, the obligation of Congress to guarantee the protection rather than going through as a freed slave? I would offer you to think about that. I would say yes. You can, if you find something else, say no. Let me know. I need to hear how that works down. It's, it's possible. I doubt it though. Why? Because the disposal grant from Congress, by, and understood by the Enabling Acts, the creation of the state itself, said that the disposal of Congress under its power to do this stuff was agreed to, to remove any, every interest of the state within the interest of the property. And so that put an obligation on the state to not interfere. So anything they come and do under color state law would be a violation against that. Under that provision, that Congress was also party to. And it did it when? They did it prior, prior, for most cases, and for most disposal acts, because the relation back doctrine to the act of disposal. And then you get back to the full faith and credit clause also backwards, Okay, back up before into the future, that the states undertook the primary disposal of the soil to be in Congress to you. Your guarantee is from Congress, not through the Ku Klux Klan Act. And this is what I've been telling you folks about how you're not necessarily, unless you create the status or allow it or ask for it, you're not that status of citizen of the United States antebellum.
But they talk about that in this court case. After the war, they talk about the court's created antebell. This property owner asked to re for remedy through that. That's up to them to decide when they get there. But the court only touched that. I'm offering to you, you don't need to go through the Ku Klux Klan Act. And to do so, I'm suggesting strongly to be able to argue, to force it through an act that happened after for remedy and guarantees that were obligating, obligated prior is a takings on its own because you don't have direct access. See, that's the problem with this case. They were independent and collateral avenues of remedy. But ultimately, for disposals in land, Congress is the go-to purveyor. They had the trust obligation. And so as I don't have the time to read through, the re I can now go through the opinion, and there's tons of stuff to read, tons of stuff to recognize and acknowledge and see. This is where you'll likely find, if I remember right, you find where they explained before actually in the holding. There used to be no remedy, but when you go look in the opinion, it says that remedy was actually having to go to Congress. It's why when you go read the old old uh, records of the congressional records, you see where Congress made acts for compensation to people, women and soldiers, and directly. We're actually talking about that time again. And this case gives us the ability to get there. In other words, as I've been trying to show you, there's ways to set your record up and make the facts stated that you don't rely on the servitudes imposed for exactions of every kind, and, and interferences that were largesse by the government, the statutory largesse, which extended rights to freed people. Now, I assume they've expanded that to everyone, because uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Nick, who, if a picture of her was correct, was a white woman, can go through that, apparently. So that also brings up another thing. Are we all presumed to be that status of freed person? And I would have to tell you that there there is a line of, of probability and possibility and a line of study you can do to show that if that's what you present as the facts. I'm not dissuading anybody from getting the remedy that they need. What I'm trying to point out to you is that where 1985, I've been telling you this 1985 the, the principles behind the 1985 were violated by the, being violated by the court. They've re, they've admitted that now. There's other things just like it that have been violated that you can take the layman's view, if you will, the uneducated view, and be correct because you stand on the principle that was no, the tradition, if you will, that they say in this case that was never supposed to be disregarded. You just don't bring it through the context of a 1983 claim, which Mrs. Nick did, probably because of the attorneys not knowing any other way to go at it. And I say it that way because I don't know of any attorney, and looking at all their bar, bar associations, continue learning education subject matter, they don't talk about property in this stuff. They talk about administrative matters. Well, that's what a legislative remedy is through the, through the 1983. Title 42 is the Municipal Code of Washington, D.C. Go look at it, folks. That's your federal citizenship for people that needed protection where no state would have extended to, to them. Uh, now think about that. These states were supposed to be honorable, and they didn't do that much. It can't be that the states are such a good deal. And I won't go as far to say that, no, that, that state is not needed. As I told you, you are a state. You're your own state, and you're not, a, and you're not alone. And you're going to have to get along. And, and near as I can see what government really was, again, it just happenstance. And looking at it now and studying it, government uh, mining districts that, that were set up by miners, people who own land to protect themselves, to work out their own differences, and to keep the uh, occupiers out, formed up to do so. None of that was mind control, governmente, whatever the heck you guys wanted to play again with the words. Yes, you could go there, but that's not really how it works. And there's another proof you could make if you want, were available to to show that uh, uh, government isn't mind control. You can make that stuff up, or you can go down and see what it, reality was shown it to be, and you could look at English a little bit cl clear, uh, clearer and find out that it's not about how you construct it, it's how it's always been used. 
We can make stuff up or we can start working with it the way it's supposed to be and stop causing so much trouble for ourselves, I guess is the other thing. Uh, so I'm not uh, sure that I can, I could read some more. I don't know. Uh, again, there's lots to read here. I'm only on page six of a 48 page document, which actually doesn't go that far because this is a, all the opinions that come on. Actually, uh, Clarence Thomas has an addition. I won't read it. He uh, explains a little, cl little clearer from his perspective what was supposed to, was supposed to go on. And so you might want to uh, inform yourself on that view. And so this is a case, uh, they say it created a catch-22, a decision they make, an unintended consequence. Folks, if they had just stayed on the traditional view that the takings happens at the point of the violation, uh, the, the, the claim happens at the point of the takings itself immediately, and leave everybody alone to go look for their remedies, we wouldn't have run into the unintended consequence that this case identifies so many people have been harmed by since 1985 that's supposedly corrected that allows us to re-see what I've been telling you. That you have rights to assert and any interference on any level by any methodology becomes, if you will, if I can throw it in a word, a takings. Remember, they're talking about the right acquired here, not even the property. Now, why do they say that? Because in 1983, it's a right, there's a, of many things, a right that's taken under color of state official by a state authority is what's actionable. On its face, that would not that would not allow for a state interference. And when you understand where it came from, it was the federal protection for freed slaves against state encroachment that would a complete lunacy to then hand that back to the state and try to give them the chance to give them a remedy when they've already attacked somebody. That this, re this reminds us again, we have to hold the law. The bar members may eventually get around to it. But you'll never get it through these guys. Uh, we only get glimpses of how they're going to, how the system is going to treat this thing. And I was talking to a friend of mine who has been uh, proceeding along for many years now through an administrative provision through a mining and ag actually it's a patented land that has aggregate, it's a uh, aggregate minerals, but the patent is uh, complete and, uh, and and whole, so that the aggregate is mineable. That the state wanted to have their peace and regulation. Uh, that we talked long years ago, and I explained to them the condition that where uh, they've been at loggerheads for a while. This, in fact, this is where I got this case from him, and uh, he told me that uh, they had found it and submitted this case to the state, and where the case where the state attorneys had not been speaking to them, they now have received a communication uh, that they want to now talk. So it's really important to be able to know what you have and how to, and how to convey it, and that the government will not on its own honor much of anything. And you saw earlier in the broadcast how the two, K, two reports, the, the, the attorneys who are under the color of doing justice, do not. They are probably the, they are the aid, at least the aiders and betters, if not the aiders and abettors, and if not the protagonists of the harm that you sense and feel and, 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 and experience. Because none of us are stepping up in the more proper ways in order to make that happen. None of us are, enough of us are, anyway, are stepping up to say, as I've been telling you in this case, for the property. The takings is self-evident. In other words, how do you find that? Well, because as far as a state level, the Enabling Act said that there is nothing the state can do to encroach. So if they encroach at all, it's a takings. And then if they cause you to go through a processing, a procedure system, that's another takings. And that's a harm, because now they're costing you something on top of the fact they haven't paid. Let me get over to explain this. I have a little bit of time to do this. In 2013, to show you that it's n it's totally within what I've been telling you, and we've actually acted upon it in the 2013 lawsuit, we told the state that if you're going to in affect the statutes that you did that our, our leverage funding uh, injunction was uh, targeting, all the legislation that would be funded by this thing, the fact that you were taking... Because when you read in this court case, you'll find in the paragraph, first paragraph of page 10, 
a statement of what constitutes a taking and regulations in that list of what can constitute a takings. That when the regulation to stop a miner from choosing how to develop his property and extract the mineral was imposed, where the legislation also did not provide a provision for appropriations for the takings it caused, we declared that to be an intention to commit a fiduciary breach, not intend to compensate, and not in, in, intend to follow the law, that there was no remedy against that. Again, we're staying in equity and developing the fact that that act alone, not appropriating money to pay where the Constitution says that there's, con not talking about the state Constitution, was to provide it, even though there's a provision of acceptance for providing it ahead of time, you hear in this case there has to be at least a knowledge you can get there, and that doesn't preclude the 1983, but nonetheless, by not providing the appropriation for the takings in a legislation that causes takings, that is a prima facie injunctive act. We did that in 2013. The state didn't answer to it. Why? Because it's been the truth. This case just confirms what I've been telling you that we've been doing, that you, I've been asking you to consider to do. And then extend it out from there, folks. This is all the same methodology. They do it wrong to us the same ways. It just looks a little different everywhere. And so the same approach can be done. It just matters on the subject matter and what you're going to claim is your right. What did you acquire? Has anybody ever thought about that when you got a property? What were the unstated acquisitions? What I tell you is those appurtenant rights. Is what I was telling you, like Wayne Hage on his property, he just found out about appurtenant rights. I was shocked. We do this to ourselves, and the court allows that, I guess is the other point. The system, the bar members are sitting there to do this to you. And in fact, this uh, this case, I don't think it went far enough to, to make a clarity on this, but that's neither here nor there. The, uh, Miss Nick now will be able to go through the hor hor horror of trying to get a, a civil rights claim through for the the, uh, the val invalidation of her property rights. Uh, and that just sh shocks me alone all by itself, but I don't know what to say. What do you say? But she's going to get something now. Hopefully. And this is our this is the other part of our problem. We're not we're not stepping up in enough voice and letting the, the grassroots, if you will, redictate that our sovereignty stands. And that's what we're talking about here. And she has the right to determine that's what sovereignty is. Not in the in the way it's described, in actually how it gets how it effectuates itself in this place. And the reason why we aren't is we get the beginning of the we get the video where the cop can somehow presume guilt about anybody they don't know. That really gets at me, because they don't have the right to have a thought if they don't know. Why? Because they have to go deal on what they witness as probable cause of crime. Not the imposition of presumption they can't back up that also defames someone. And, and what do they do there? They take away your right to avoid, don't they? That's a takings, if you understand what I've been saying today how it relates to what I was saying earlier in the broadcast. It's totally different, but totally connected. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said inspires you, gets you to look at a little differently, go at this get this case to so those of you that are in property and property rights and think you know about property, find out what this court case says, apply what I'm telling you, think about it yourself. Make up make up your own stuff on how you apply what you know. You know you can do, as you can research as fact, not the stuff you make up as a story. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and everybody that does simulcasting, sound minds over there, ucy.tv. Thank you very much, Jules. And everybody that will post this product, uh, this uh, uh, broadcast uh, at the on the various uh, streams or whatever, uh, and then pass it out, uh, folks. Just uh, just get the word out. It's up to us. I hope I'm putting, um, doing my part to help you uh, on the path and get you going down near, uh, on your journey to make this place a little bit better. It's up to us to do that. I'll be here next week. Tech tips for nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 